Hello and welcome traders. I'm Valentine, your host for today's insightful discussion brought to you by forexprogram.com. In today's episode, we have the privilege of diving into the minds of experienced traders as they share their strategies, insights and journeys in the world of trading. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to refine your skills or a newcomer eager to learn, you're in the right place. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's turn our attention to our esteemed guest for today, Lucia. Lucia is not only a seasoned trader, but also a standout member of our trading community here at forexproperum.com. Lucia had a 25k funded account. Today, Lucia is here to share her secrets with us. Get ready to learn from someone who's really done it. So let's give a warm welcome to Lucia. Please introduce yourself to our community. Hello, I'm Lucia. I'm 26 years old. I'm from Lima, Peru, and I'm here to share a little bit more about my personal ex personal experience with uh, trading. Thank you so much for the space. Okay, perfect. So the first question I'm going to ask you is, how long have you been trading for? When it all started for me in the pandemic time, as many of us, I lost um, the job I had in that moment. So I started researching a little bit more about trading and the whole community about it. And then, back then, that's, it's been almost four years. I okay, yeah. really good. So let's talk a little bit about your strategy. Do you consider yourself a scalper, a day trader or a swing trader? Actually, I'm more of a swing trader because I have a parallel job. So the mm -hmm. times were a little bit more created uh, with the scalping. So I focused more on swing trading. So let's say one trade I made. Uh, it can take me about one week at most. After that, okay. I, I like the, the entries. And I usually mm -hmm. take like one or two uh, trades a week. Okay, yeah. so no more than two trades per week. Exactly, no more than two trades. Okay, really good. What are your most favorite trading pairs? I would say Euro USD, GPP USD are one of the most common I use. Uh, because uh, there's a lot of people trading on that. There's always like, you know, some volatility. So I, I like to tra trade those. Yes. Yeah, it's the same for me. I only trade Euro. Sometimes I'm looking at GBP based on the news that are released. But at the end of the day, one or two pairs is more than enough that you need because both pairs do offer more than enough opportunities. So that's really good. Exactly. Yes, I do. When you're swing trading, do you take your entries during specific trading sessions? Yes, I normally try to enter during London session or mm -hmm. New York session because these times are more people trading, of course. Okay, nice. Can you briefly describe your trading plan? So what is it that you're looking for prior to taking an entry? Okay, so I use a very common strategy, I think, a very popular one. It's the trading line. I draw a trading line on the price. So then I set an alert. And every time the price cross that line, it sends me an alert on my cell phone or the computer. And then I look to the chart and I wait for a pullback or let's say a solidification. And after that, I wait for a big candle to hit in, the, in my direction. And that's where I like to enter a trade. Okay, yes. nice. Tell us a little bit about your trading history and your journey that you have been on for the last four years. Okay, so my history has been with ups and downs, of course. Mostly downs, as it's not that easy, as you all know. I've been trading on many platforms, and then I hear about a first prop firm. I decided it would be a better option to uh, enter a challenge to see if I can get a little bit bigger, of course. And I try all these possibilities. I'm still uh, on this path of learning and learning every day uh, because you never learn enough in this, in trading in general. So yeah, keep learning every day, trying new things, watching mentors, let's say videos and everything about trading to keep learning and improving step by step. Yeah, that's really good. And I think it, it's the most important thing in trading to really do something every day. For me personally, it's logging the, the day that, and I'm logging entries and what the pair has done and stuff like that. Do you use a journal or 
how do you put on uh, your trades? I see the news every day. So I know that if there's something important, I should not enter or try not to enter at least. Unless mm -hmm. the, all the conditions are very clear for me. But usually I try not to trade on news. Okay. Better for and me. do you have a trading journal? Where you say the, the trades that you took? Or not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I save all my trades. I look at uh, my mistakes there. I see why uh, this trade was probably not best for me. Or I look for... You know, for errors, try to get better for the next ones. Yes, I do that. I have yeah. a record. Of that. Yeah, in my opinion, that's the most important thing for someone who is trying to get profitable. Because at the end of the day, you need to have the data and you need to see what mistakes you have done. And I always have a notion journal and it's like filtered by days of the week. It's filtered by month of the year. And I really can, if I need to look something up, I'm going to check there because I can see what trades did I take last year in March or stuff like that. And what was it that I did wrong? And for me personally, that was the most important thing. And that really changed the way that I traded because after typing out the mistakes that I made, I really became aware of them. And the next time I was aware of the mistake, I was looking at my journal, so I make sure to not do the same mistake again. And for me, that's the most important thing to really be consistent. And it really doesn't depend on the strategy that you're using because I'm trading ICT. And at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. So the trading journal is one of the most important things. Exactly. I agree with you. Yes. Okay. So. Share a challenge you faced in your trading career and how you overcame it. Okay, I had the 25k challenge. It was one step challenge. And mm -hmm. I chose this one because I think it will be better for me to not have like a time limit, you know, you know to reach the profit target. Mm -hmm. It was a 10% profit. So yeah, I chose this one and it took me around not much. I think it was around two weeks. I did only one, no, a couple of trades in a daily chart. So, yeah, it wasn't very long, to be honest. It was a, a very good uh, specific trade that I was waiting for. Uh, you have to be very patient with it, as you must know. Uh, so, yeah, I waited for it, uh, looking to the chart every day to find the, a better entry. Mm -hmm. And then I placed my trade. And yeah. It took me around a couple of weeks to get to the profit required. Yes. Okay, nice. What is the typical risk that you're using for one entry? I use four percentage uh, risk, depending of, of the challenge I'm taking, of course, because you have different rules. But yeah, I'm taking like four uh, percent. And what is the risk to reward ratio that you're aiming with a trade? If usually it's one to one. But uh, mm -hmm. if I can go further, I do that. I did that actually in, in the challenge to pass it. I was like uh, one to three, I think, if I'm not wrong. So, but normally I like to go with one to one, so I, I say, say further. I like to be safe. But if you okay. see that the possibilities to go up, you can do that even if you have to break even, you know? Okay. How long did it take for you to become a consistent trader? Well, it's, it's not been really easy. It's been a long trip. I think it took me like, let's say, three years or something. It was at the beginning mostly lost. It was something that you have to work on it uh, with consistency, with very much patience. You have to have a lot of patience uh, to build the chart, to get into them and mm -hmm. learn from people that are more experienced. And at least that's what I did. I searched for a lot of people there and YouTube videos, a lot of that. Yeah, it took me around three years, something a little bit more to get yeah. uh, to come. Yeah. yeah, in my opinion, three years is totally fine because some take five years, some take only one year, but the three years are totally fine because it's definitely up to you 
one is taking longer the other one is not taking so long and for me it was like around three to almost four years as well and it really doesn't matter i think there is a lot of false opinion going on like on instagram and stuff like that because when i started trading i was like thinking about how i can be a millionaire in the next two years or stuff like that and that's what really got me messed up and i lost a lot of money when I started out and in my opinion trading is definitely really hard and you really need to overcome the bad habits that you have while being on the charts so if it took you three years it's totally fine because at the end of the day if you really learned out of the mistakes you made you've come a long way because now you know what you did wrong and you won't do it again and you really have your path for your future success. It's not like uh, you can be rich uh, from that one day to another. It's not like that. Uh, sometimes, as you said, social videos makes you feel that way. But no, it's, it's harder than most people think it is. Yeah, of course. And because it's so hard to overcome your psych psychological barriers that you have in your head, the fear and the greed and all of the emotions that you're feeling and that's the reason why in my opinion trading is one of the hardest businesses to to do and to succeed in so i really respect the people that are consistently profitable because trading is really hard it's really hard but once you get there and you have your rules in place it won't be that hard again because you know what you're looking for and you have everything you need because when I first started out I was looking for new trading strategies and I was looking for new mentors and it really messed me up because I had so much information that really didn't really get into my head so after I stopped focusing on so much different things I really focused on the basics that I need to focus on which is risk management which is planning out my trade ahead and which is the third thing for me is to just not do dumb shit at the end of the day because when you're doing stuff like over leveraging or not putting in a stop loss that's the things that will get you messed up in trading if you stick to the basics let's say you're risking four percent if you're sticking to that and you're sticking to your your plan your analysis plan you're completely set up so the hardest thing for a trader is the first let's say two to three to four years to really get the the path and to know the basics in my opinion exactly i agree with you and something that happened to me also it was that i watched all these videos in youtube with the magic indicators they put like three or four indicators Mm -hmm. that supposedly will get you to get profitable but with time you you understand and you get to know that there's no magic indicators uh, that sometimes uh, to be more practical the least the better that's how it works for me at least to have uh, let's say a clear chart so i can look in detail and not be bothered with you know a lot of indicators a lot of lines and, and stuff that can maybe distract you from your objective you know? yeah of course of course do you follow a daily trading routine uh, yeah i like to look at the charts at the time mm -hmm. that uh, i have planned it's mm -hmm. usually in the morning so i get up i watch the charts i watch um, gbp usd or euro usd the ones that i like to trade most and i see i start to mark in the the trading line the trend lines and setting maybe an alarm if there's a situation where I can set one. And well, I yeah, I basically I do that. And wait till the price hit the, the trend line. Mm -hmm. and start watching that specific uh, uh, chart, following uh, through the week, day by yeah. day. Yeah, that's really good because I think it really relieves a little bit of stress for yourself because you set your alert. You know what you're waiting for and you can do other stuff you can do your normal job and just 
not sitting the whole day and waiting for something to happen because for me personally i feel like if i look at the charts i'm always going to find an idea or something i can trade but it really depends on the quality of the trades because sometimes i see a trade and it's really not high probability and after i decreased the time that i was looking at the charts i decreased the trading frequency and i'm like you i always take like one or two trades per week max and after i decreased the frequency my profitability went higher because let's say if i have a free risk to reward ratio i'm risking one percent and let's say i win one and i lose one for the week so i'm up three percent i'm losing one percent again so i'm at two percent for one week if i do that over the course of a month i'm up a percent and it's really a good percentage because you don't need to make 20 percent a month or 30 percent a month because the capital will do the heavy lifting if you're doing it on a let's say 10k account your eight percent per month won't be that much but think about if you have like one or two million in funding capital how much is eight percent i think it will really pay the bills for all of us for one month so really focus on growing your capital and building it up and not focusing so much on increasing the risk that you're using because for me i can't take more than one percent risk because i think if i'm getting into drawdown my emotions are kicking in so i'm always sticking to one percent because i feel like i am going to accept the risk i'm going to accept accept the fact that i can lose one percent and i'm totally fine with that but if i think about let's say two or three percent it will be really hard for me to emotionally get through the trade even if i'm doing swing trading but it really depends on how your personality is exactly yes yes i agree yes as you said if you have a correct risk management as yours i think it the the percentage that you win it's more than enough if you trade one or two times per week i think it's all about not over trading but having the correct risk management in this case yeah yeah I and think i think so. My mental capital was really burned up when I looked five days of the week just staring at the charts when I came home. Because it's you really need to focus yourself when you're trading. And when you're trying to trade London and trying to trade New York, it's so much going into your head that you will be burned out after a couple of weeks or months doing that. And I really decreased my frequency and went back to just enjoying life because all of us were trading for freedom and why are we making ourselves slaves to the charts but at the end of the day your profitability won't go up just because you start you stared at the chart the whole day in my opinion so i really decreased the frequency and i learned that Sometimes there is going to form a trade without me and I'm totally fine with that because I know the next opportunity is always around the corner and I'm always going to find something where I can do my 2 or 3% a week and I'm totally fine with that. If I had 3% 3 a week, I'm just leaving the charts alone and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life because I don't need to look at the charts. I made my profit for the week and I'm not trying to give it away because for me the hardest things were when i gave away profit that i made early in the week just to give it back on friday i don't know if that had happened to you but i was really pissed off the whole weekend because i was thinking about how can i be so dumb to give away the profit that i already made yeah 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 I, it's happened to me too uh, sometimes you also want to trade on the weekend so you can recover from from that loss yeah. it's a it's a bad feeling but yeah as you said you have to be very careful with the trades you enter yeah, be patient and wait for them not over trade because as you said also we have a a life you know a family maybe other have kids or another job like me yeah. studies you need to to be uh, aware of that of course yeah that's really true 
How is trading for forexperform.com different from trading independently? Okay, it's it's kind of different, of course, because uh, you have rules to follow on the challenge. But uh, to know that at uh, the end of the day, you will have an probably have an opportunity to grow your account. It's very motivating. Maybe if you have a small account uh, by yourself, it's not that uh, much pain for you. Maybe if you uh, follow the rules and you work hard on completing the challenge, you will, of course, reach a higher account um, and have more profits, higher profits. And that's very motivating for me. I do not have that motivation when I trade a small account. So that's the best part for me. Yeah. And I think, let's say you're trying to trade on a $1,000 account. Really, what are 5% on a 1K account? So you really need to do over leveraging and stuff like that to flip that account. But I don't want to do it because these are some bad habits that are going to influence the way you trade on let's say a prop firm account or stuff like that. And you, in my opinion, prop firms are really the best way to build up your capital. And you can use the capital that you made from your prop firms account to fund your personal account. But at the end of the day, I tried to trade $500 accounts. And <laughs> what did it really, how did I profit out of that? In my opinion, it really isn't that great for yourself because i think it's or for me personally i was demotivated by trading for let's say five dollars or stuff like that exactly yes it's, you don't have a lot of motivation with that i agree yeah yeah okay the last question is going to be what recommendations do you have for someone starting out with trading okay i will say that patient for me was the most important thing you have to be very patient with uh, trading it's not like as we said before you're going to become um, profitable in one or two weeks it doesn't take that less time it takes uh, consistency and patience so and to keep that in mind it's always important also to watch other people that are successful youtube videos or read some books maybe about them will help you a lot in, the, in your entries, your patterns, your strategies. I think the, that's a very important thing to take in mind. At least it helped me when I became. Okay, mm -hmm. really good. So, Lucia, thank you so much for your time and sharing insights into your trading strategy and how you became funded. If you guys want to know more about FPF, you can go to the first link in the description. That's it for this interview today. See you guys in the next video on the channel. Until next time, happy trading.